Hello! So you want to learn a language but you don't really know how to go about it? Or maybe you already understand the importance of having a solid language learning routine but you just feel a bit uninspired? Well, I guess you came across the right video. By the way, my name is Kevin, I'm a polyglot, a language teacher and a linguistics postgraduate and I try to use my expertise to make the best videos on language learning. Or at least I try. Before doing this video, I watched a lot of other polyglots language learning routines and my general impression was that they didn't go into enough depth and it was sometimes a little bit superficial, hence why I'm making this video. Before I dig into my language learning routine, there's a couple of things I need to explain first. To come up with this language learning routine, I had to go through a lot of trial and error and so far this has been what's worked best for me and what has been the most efficient and made the most sense. What's important in my language learning routine is that I have variety so that I can work on the four language skills because I personally prefer to not just focus on speaking or listening for example but also want to be able to read and write in the language so I need to have enough activities to cover all bases. I am also a big believer of learning grammar so you will see that in my routine there is time allocated for studying grammar. Finally it's very important for me to do language learning every single day. This means that I will never give myself the excuse of not doing any language learning on any single day, even if it means doing only 10 or 15 minutes. Obviously, it doesn't mean you have to do the same thing as me, you can still learn a language if you don't learn it every single day, but that's something I will discuss a bit more at the end of the video. So let's have a look at my timetable then. So this is my language learning calendar, which I did on Google. Um, you will see that even though I put you know, specific times for everything, there's actually a lot of flexibility and some of the things I don't necessarily do at the time that I put on the screen, but it's just so you can visualize it and see everything that I do. But I will explain the spontaneity that there is on my timetable um, as, you know, as I go through everything. So the first thing I'll talk about is my lesson with uh, my teacher Todo-san and he's my, uh, one of my Japanese teachers so I use him for uh, conversation classes mainly so that's a class that I use for practicing the, the grammar that I've learned, um, the vocab, I also learn new words. And on the following days, on Thursdays and Fridays, I allocated some time to review the lesson. And by review, what I mean is that um, the teacher allows me to record the lesson. And um, I rewatch the lesson and go through everything we've done. You know, I write down the new words of vocab, why I made mistakes, how, you know, what was the correction that I got. Um, and that can take a bit of time. So I allocated two hours, but it could be that sometimes I need another hour. And if I do need an hour, an extra hour, then I can do it on Saturday or on Sunday, Monday, you know, kind of any time that I want. Um, it really depends. So, you know, there is flexibility. My other Japanese class is with my teacher Aina and uh, this teacher is mainly for grammar practice. We do a bit of conversation but I want her to focus on um, helping me you know, practice the grammar and yeah she's just great to help me revise uh, things that I've learned and identify what I need to work on so it's quite nice to have a professional that can sort of give you that kind of feedback. And after my lesson with Aina, I also have some homework. Um, depending on the length of homework, I will do it in one sitting or maybe in three sittings, depends. Um, so I located several times on my timetable where I could do the homework. So on Sunday, I will definitely spend an hour, an hour and 15 minutes to do the homework. Um, and if I haven't finished, I've got other days in the week uh, on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday when I can finish the homework because I also need to send it to her like, you know, early enough so she has time to correct it. Uh, so I've got lots of times um, allocated to that. And you will also notice that I put homework uh, slash other on three occasions. And that's because if on that day I don't feel like doing the homework or maybe I don't have any homework uh, to, to do, uh, maybe I did everything, then I can do anything I want. I can do some reading practice uh, with graded readers. Um, I can do writing practice. I can use uh, my Japanese textbook, which I've been using. Um, all the resources are detailed in a series that I did, which is called Japanese Progress Update. Uh, so I will put a link in the description box below. Uh, that would be too long to explain here, but I've got lots of resources which I can use uh, if I don't have anything to do in terms of homework. Something else that I do as well is I allocate some time uh, to watch videos on YouTube. So these videos can be actually anything as long as they are either in Japanese or about Japanese language, that's fine by me. So for example, uh, the other day I was learning about a new grammatical term, uh, koto, in Japanese and I spent some time watching videos to sort of learn how it works. Um, I also was uh, sort of 
confused about the conjugation of the uh, informal form or the plain form. So I spent also some time watching videos that kind of go through the conjugation and yeah, so it's, it's more like passive learning, I guess. I'm not really studying um, grammar when I'm doing that, but it's more, it's kind of a way of learning, but not really studying like, you know, very intensively. And I kind of like that because, you know, I already spent an hour on Sunday on that day uh, doing the homework. So I don't want to, I don't want to do it too much. Another thing that you might have noticed is Anki. So Anki is something that I do every day. If you don't know what Anki is, it's a SRS flashcard uh, app, um, which is great for revising vocab and also learning kanji or, you know, characters in, uh, in languages which, uh, which use a different script. But yeah, so that's uh, something I do every day. So 15 minutes, it doesn't need to be longer than that. Um, I don't want to do it too much because I prefer doing more practice. Uh, and 15 minutes of vocab learning every day is good enough, I think. Sometimes it can even be a bit less as well. And finally, uh, this one is not so much language learning, but it's something that I enjoy doing and it's listening to podcasts. Um, I listen to Bilingual News, which is a podcast um, in English and um, Japanese. So it's not fully in Japanese, but I like to listen to it when I'm falling asleep. I really like um, the way they speak. It's very soothing, quiet, it's not loud or anything. I Honestly, don't actually do it every night. I try to, but um, not always. It depends on my mood. Uh, sometimes I will listen to another podcast, but sometimes I will listen to uh, Japanese, but I try to do it as often as possible. But, you know, a couple, some days I just don't feel like doing it. So now that I have gone through the timetable, I also want to make some comments. So there is definitely a lot of things on there and I would be lying if I told you that I do everything every single day. There are some days where I need to be more flexible. For example, I need, I've got plans with friends or maybe I've got some work commitments, whatever. So if it's something planned, then I will try to work around this. So I will do something earlier or after, depending on um, when I'm busy. But if, for example, um, I have no time or I'm exhausted or I don't know, anything like that, then I will at least do Anki for 15 minutes. It's not very long, but it's still important for me to keep um, that routine of always doing Japanese uh, to sort of keep the ball rolling, if that makes sense. And if I do something, at least I won't feel as bad. You know, it can happen. We're not always free. We, uh, we have commitments, you know, life happens. But um, if I do at least a little bit, then it's not so bad. And at least I've done something, which is, um, you know, you can feel proud of yourself that despite being very busy, you still did something. In terms of why everything tends to be in the afternoon is kind of because of personal preferences. I used to do Japanese in the morning for half an hour but it was just a bit too much stress and yeah I wasn't a fan of waking up earlier to study. I mean I could, it was doable but I just didn't like it as much and I realized that doing learning in the afternoon uh, was more efficient for me. I feel like I'm more active, more productive um, and yeah it's just what's worked for me um, best but if you feel like you're more of a morning person or maybe you, you start work later um, or you're just okay with doing things in the morning, then um, yeah, by all means, do more studying in the morning, do a mix of both, you know, morning and afternoon, whatever, whatever works, you know, uh, just adapt it. As I said at the beginning of the video, it's all about trial and error. Try and see if it works. If it doesn't adapt, change it and find something that's more uh, effective and more productive for you. Also, I'm thinking that maybe some of you will think this timetable is a bit too intense and I kind of agree, but at the same time, it's because uh, Japanese in my daily activities is high on my priority list um, and I make it one of the most important things in my day um, on top of work, obviously. So that's why I dedicate so much time to it, but that does mean that I make it my priority. But if language learning is not your priority, um, then um, it's fine for you to do less. You know, in fact, adapt. You don't have to do language learning every day. Um, I do it every day because that's something I've decided and that's something I enjoy as well. But there's nothing wrong with you doing it, you know, twice, three times a week, uh, if that's what you want. I do think the progress will be slower if you do it, um, you know, only a couple of times a week. But then it doesn't matter, you know, if you're okay with having slow progress and taking your time, then that's absolutely fine. Oh, and final thing. So I wouldn't recommend um, if you're in a situation where you've never had a language learning routine to go as hardcore as what you can see on your screen. The truth is this has taken me over a year to put in place. It was progressive. I used to do only Japanese every couple of days and then gradually uh, it, it became a daily thing. And then 
then I could do more on every single day and that's something I built up. I think if you do it from the beginning uh, without, you know, um, progression, it will be too intense. I mean, it depends on the person, but I think you, it's too difficult to do in one go. So build things up, do things progressively, and you'll see that once the habit um, sort of kicks in uh, or is settled, you'll find it easier to add things on top of it. If you just do too much at a time, it's gonna be way too intense and I don't really think it's gonna work. But obviously try and see if it works for you or not. All right, so that's it for the video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, then, you know, leave a comment. I will try to answer them as best as I can. I hope I didn't forget anything. I really tried to, you know, tell you a bit more about how I did my timetable and how you can sort of uh, do yours as well. Uh, by all means, take whatever you think was good from this video and ignore what you think wasn't good for you. The point is really to have a routine that works for you and makes sense for you, for your life, for your circumstances. Um, so don't necessarily try to imitate what I did because I just have a different life than yours, right? Um, so make sure that you adapt it, you are realistic as well, do it progressively. And I think that's all the advice I can give. So yeah, as I said, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will see you next week. Bye.